All right, so what we got going on today is I'm going to be working on the downpipe for this thing. I want to get some of that hammered out. So I have a 3-inch V-band with some stainless. I'm probably going to do a mostly stainless downpipe. I'm going to be reusing all the as much as I can from the triple turbo downpipe that I had. That's where this first 90 came from, and then I have two others and some other bends. There's an O2 sensor bung in the backside there, so I might use that section because it already has the O2 welded in. Just keep kind of using these pieces and fitting this thing up. The first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the heater hoses, and then I'm probably just going to go right around where this AC line is. That should give you enough room to sneak the three inches under there. So I'll start there, I'll snip that thing, and I'll mock up the downpipe and then I'll pull it out and show you. All right, so I did get these heater hose lines snipped and then I'll just be able to wrap them right around the top of this line. It should work pretty good and there's enough room to go over here. So I'll just extend a little piece there. Should be good. And then I did start to get the downpipe welded in. So I just have it tacked into place. I just used the MIG and then tacked it. I was able to reuse my bung there. It's like a good distance from the turbo. And I have a nice straight shot right here, but I was able to reuse that section and then do a little like 45 and then I'm going to go down here to a V-band and then I'll V-band it to the muffler. So for now it'll just be a good downpipe until I actually put the muffler on it. Like I said, I did order the boost actuated loud valve. So that's coming from China. So that's going to be like probably, I think it said like mid-November or something. So maybe we'll just run downpipe for a little while. But factory muffler, muffler is going to stay on there in a the factory location. It is a dual inlet though, so I'm probably going to repurpose this piece from the like the old muffler that I had on the Ranger, where I can go three inch into a dual two and a half. So that should work pretty good when the time comes. See, so yeah, I'm glad I'm kind of I'm glad I'm doing this. It's a little challenging. Sometimes I think it's easier to just buy the stuff and then make it all new, but it's a good challenge to try to repurpose and reuse stuff because it, otherwise it's just going to sit there and I'm probably not going to use it. So. Let's pull that pipe out and get welded. All right, so you got the downpipe all welded up in there. I just hit it with the MIG. I didn't really care about making it look nice, and the joints weren't really cut straight. So I didn't really want to spend a whole bunch of time on fit up because I just really don't care that much. So I just hit it with the MIG and welded it all up. So that's all done now. I do, did have the turbo clocked. I did clock the turbo. I just have it loose for now, so I want to figure out that drain line yet. So that'll be tomorrow. I did finish the cold side. I'm just going to go right to the intake and see how that thing does. This is just stuff that I had laying around. I was going to put this on there just because I think that would look kind of cool. Uh, but I would have to get a 4-inch to 3-inch coupler for that. So if I decide I want to, I can. But we'll see how this thing does for now so when this turbo was on the ranger my intake temps would get to like 200 degrees with this intercooler here so that could have been like some other variables too i don't know it'll be interesting to test it on just low boost i was also running kind of high boost then so we'll see how it does i am gonna plan on switching it over to e85 or at least like putting a flex sensor in it eventually and setting up the flex to work correctly i normally just tune everything on e85 because i have a 85 pump a block from my house, so it's not hard to access. Uh, and then I finished the, well, almost finished the heater lines. So I just ended up getting four of these 5 eighths fittings, or three of them, and a spark plug. I just stuffed the spark plug in there for now because I they O'Reilly's only had three fittings. So that's kind of what it looks like. It comes up underneath the turbo. It's like got a lot of distance all the way around and then just swings over this way, so that should be fine. So I'll pick up one of these other ones tomorrow. And that should be good. I'll throw the wide band in there. And then I still got to do oil feed line. I did order parts though. So I didn't have, I thought I had parts laying around. Because that's kind of like the whole theme of this thing is parts laying around and just repurposing stuff. But what I but what I had forgotten is that on the triple turbo setup, it's all 3AN lines and I want to use 4AN. So I ended up getting like a little adapter and I can show you guys how I do that. I get a lot of questions about that Ask actually how I pull... Um, off the rear sensor and still keep oil pressure. So basically I use like an adapter fitting drill and tap it. That's what I did on the Mustang. So I'm gonna do that again on here. It's like a $14 fitting and then the drain, uh, the feed line. So I just bought a new line. It's essentially, essentially what I had on the triple turbo setup on the Ranger was this block and there was a 4AN going to this block and then I had three 3AN lines coming off of it. And instead of trying to adapt all of these lines together because they're short, I just decided to buy them. 
because those were all like 24 inch lines, so I would at least have to adapt two of them together. I just didn't want to do that. So anyways, that's how it is. That's how it is. I have those fittings and stuff that should be here tomorrow, so I should be able to finish the feed and drain tomorrow, get the turbo bolted tight, and put the wide band in and at least maybe start tuning. I'm not gonna tune it yet. I gotta put the fuel pump in there. I bought a Walbro 450, so we're gonna do a single Walbro in the tank in like the factory position. And I'm just gonna use the stock lines and everything. I'm not gonna put like a fuel pressure regulator or anything on it. We'll just use the stock one. Um, I don't think the one-to-one -one is really gonna be that important. Running like nine pounds or whatever it's gonna be. So we're just gonna do that. Like try to make it as cheap and easy as possible and just kind of showing like what you could do if you just really wanted to hammer through it and get it done and have a turbo. And a lot of this stuff is going to apply to like pretty much any GM truck because they all freaking look the same. So if you don't want to do the LS swap part of the LS stuff, just want to throw a turbo on something, there you go.